Yo, my name is Major Slack and welcome back to Major Slack videos, your first stop for easy Elden Ring gameplay. Okay, so my Samurai walkthrough is now complete. I also have a complete prisoner walkthrough of Elden Ring, although unfortunately it is now broken. It was actually broken just before I was about to complete that walkthrough back in October 2022. Literally two days before I was about to complete that real walkthrough of Elden Ring, a walkthrough I had been working on for months, for months. From software released patch 1.07, which corrected a bug, <laughs> unfortunately, a bug in the game which allowed you to cast, allowed you to cast the rock sling spell at great distances as long as you use a staff equipped in your left hand. All right. Essentially, as long as you could lock on to an enemy and you equipped a staff in your left hand, you could hit that enemy with rock sling regardless of how far away, how far away it was from you, rather. As demonstrated in Park City, Part 60 of my original Prisoner walkthrough at the 26 minute mark. Here you can see me taking out a field boss in Lane Del the Royal Capital, like way far away with relative ease using Rock Sling. Um, this long distance Rock Sling ability was patched out. <laughs> can you imagine they patched it out just before I was about to take on the final boss in the game in my original Prisoner run, Elden Beast. And I was going to rely heavily on that long distance rock sling to take down Elden Beast. And they patched it out like literally two freaking days before I was about to record that run. So, um, yeah, I actually had to respec into a strength build to finally beat the game in that original prisoner walkthrough because I had no backup plan. So, yeah, I had to respec into a strength build to beat that. Um, and unfortunately, I used that long distance rock sling game mechanic, which is now, you know, it's not, it's no longer a game mechanic. It's a bug. Unfortunately, I used that long distance rock sling heavily throughout the entire prisoner walkthrough. So now that walkthrough is broken, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, well, then some breaks. I remember discussing this with one of my viewers who said they were never going to patch that out. And I reluctantly and eventually agreed with him. Because at that point, it had been about maybe six months since the game had been released. And not that I'm blaming that viewer. It was my decision. It was my decision completely. But I should have trusted my intuition on that because I was always a little suspicious of that game mechanic thinking, I wonder if this is a glitch. I wonder if they're going to patch this out. And sure enough, they patched it out. Ah, well. So I want to redo my prisoner run. All that to say, I want to redo my prisoner run, do it up proper. Um, there is another odd thing that increases the range of rocks, the rock sling spell, and that is the arrow's reach talisman. Arrow's reach is supposed to increase the range of all bows in the game, but it also increases the range of rock sling. Now, I have always been uh, suspicious of this as well. However, they talk about this in the official Elden Ring Game Guide Volume 2 on page 372. And let me quote, I've got it right here in front of me. I own um, the Game Guide Volume 2. Let me quote, it says, Rock Sling uses the power of gravity to pull three large rocks from the ground and launch them at your target, dealing heavy damage to health and stance. Its effective range, this is interesting, its effective range is roughly half of your maximum lock-on distance beyond which the rocks will lose momentum and fall rather than simply disappearing. This can work in your favor. Casting the rock sling spell from an elevated position will significantly increase its range. Yes, I knew about that. And, and this is important, you can equip the arrow's reach talisman to extend its range even further. Okay, now the official Elden Ring Game Guide Volume 2 is sanctioned by From Software Developers, okay? It's officially sanctioned and sponsored by From Software Developers. So um, they have their blessing. So I'm gonna just assume that this is never gonna get patched out, okay? This is a game mechanic. It's not a game bug, all right? So I'm gonna use the Arrow's Reach Talisman throughout this run and just assume it's never gonna get patched out. Please don't fucking patch it out, okay? <laughs> uh, anyways, part of my French. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's why I'm redoing my Elden Ring Prisoner Run. Enough of the small talk, let's get underway and I'll explain more about why I wanna make this an express run through the game. Not a speed run, an express run. All right, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. All right, here's the deal. Around the middle of March, I wanna start a walkthrough of a brand new game, not Elden Ring, another newly released game. What game? Sorry, that's confidential for the moment. 
Suffice it to say, I've been waiting for this game for a while and I'm glad I finally have a new PC powerful enough to run that game. It's just a matter of whether that game will be released in good condition or not. Um, that is, will it be playable and will it be relatively bug free? And nowadays, as many of you know, that's a complete crapshoot. We never know. We're just gonna have to. We're just gonna have to wait until the game is released, and I'll have to evaluate it and then take it from there. Meanwhile, this gives me two months. Okay, unfortunately, two months is not enough time for me to produce a complete Elden Ring walkthrough. My original Prisoner walkthrough ran 71 hours and my recently completed Samurai walkthrough ran 86 hours. Now, admittedly both of those were done to live running commentary which always increases the running time by about 50%. But nevertheless, doing the math, real walkthrough videos which take a lot more time and effort to produce um, than blind playthroughs, um, real walkthrough videos, target length 30 minutes, 5 days a week, I'm just not going to be able to pull that off in 2 months on top of my workload. Uh, producing Starfield videos over on my other cha my other channel rather major slack attack All right, so for this reason I will be attempting to do an express run through Elden Ring with this new prisoner run I've been practicing this extensively for a couple months now um, I want to make it clear though. I want to make it clear. This is not a speed run Okay, the priority is as always making Elden Ring accessible to gamers of all skill levels by, by taking a highly strategic approach. That is the priority. However, I do want to trim all the fat and do it as quickly as possible while respecting the easy strategic approach. All right, um, the video footage you're watching now is me, um, basically a prototype practice run of this Elden Express, Elden Ring Express walkthrough. I am working Lane Dell, the Royal Capital, at the six hour and 20 minute mark. That's right, I broke into Lane Dell, the Royal Capital, just in a, just a little over six hours. So this is what I'm aiming for. And um, be advised though that this prototype run, this was without commentary, all right? This is like, you know, off camera without the commentary. Um, the following walkthrough you're about to watch will use all the strategies I've worked out for this express run. And we'll see if I can maintain this pace to finish this express run of Elden Ring before the middle of March. All right, that's it. Time's a wasting. The clock is ticking. Let's get on up. Let's get into it. Let's get involved. Elden Ring Express Walkthrough Prisoner Class starts now. Major Slack Videos. All right, Gamer Slack is down there in the trenches behind the gun and MC Dub Slack here in the rear of the gear on the microphone. Let me just take the leash off Gamer Slack. There you go, Gamer Slack. Off you go. Atta boy. Go get that Elden Beast. Go get him. Go get him. Atta boy. Okay, we're going to start off as the prisoner. Nope, prisoner. Atta boy. And lands between rune keepsake. There you go. Sorcerer Express lands between rune keepsake. And that's it. I'm going to choose my favorite. We're going to be, we're going to be selling our armor fairly quickly. So uh, for quite a while, we're going to be staring at a naked butt, whatever gender you decide to, to choose. So um, I choose female because I just don't want to stare at a naked man's butt for the first hour of the walkthrough. All right, um, grab the tarnished wizened finger uh, that's required to open this door. And then there's completely optional boss fight. It's really just a challenge. All you have to do is just get out there if you're new to the game. Get down into this area here. The boss will drop in. You'll see the big red boss bar. As soon as you see that, you can jump over the side on the left to commit suicide with no penalty and no shame. Okay, so there's a big red boss bar. Off you go. And you died. Your first death, but it doesn't really count. All right, you're going to be playing primarily as a Spellblade. Um, the two best character classes to start out as uh, for a Spellblade are the Astrologer or the Prisoner, which is what we chose. We chose the Prisoner because uh, we want two spells, the Glintstone Pebble and the Magic Limb Plate to start out with. The Astrologer starts out with the, the Glintstone Pebble. The Prisoner starts out with the Magic Limb Plate. Basically, it's a lot easier for the Prisoner get, to get the Glintstone Pebble than it is for the Astrologer to get the Magic Limb Plate. So that's why we chose the Prisoner, even though the Astrologer, astrologer starts out with more intelligence. On the way up, I'm going to strip 
We're gonna give her a name. Sorcerer Express. What should we call her? Post a comment. And I want to put both weapons into the right hand and the shield in the left. The prisoner starts out with magic limp blade and a stabbing sword. Officially a thrusting sword, the s -talk. The special thing about this thrusting sword, the s -talk, is you could stab enemies while holding your shield up. And the thing about magic limp blade is it's a delayed action magic spell. Okay, so now we're heading towards the church. I'm going to be using the compass heavily throughout this walkthrough, okay? So we're heading north towards the church. Avoid that big mounted knight there patrolling up and down there. He will just lay waste to you unless you're an expert. Grab this golden rune too. That's 400 runes. Into the church. Discover the side of grace. Grab the smithing stone and circle around the merchant. Just discover the side of grace. Grab the smithing stone. Circle around the merchant. Jump up the wall behind him. Grab a mushroom here. Point yourself to the north and head due north. Okay, there's a guy sitting by a campfire up ahead. We're gonna kill him twice. We need the money. We need this is where 64 runes. Just go into sneak mode, go right up behind him, press the attack button to get a critical hit, instant kill. Then go into the cave. Grab the mushroom. That's where 64 runes. We're gonna do that again on the way out. So what we're gonna do is gonna rest at the side of grace. To respawn that enemy. And then we're gonna go out and kill him again. This time we're gonna kill him with the magic limp blade. Just lock on, hold down the attack button to do a charge attack. And you don't have to wait. This is the thing about the magic limp blade. Once you've locked on and cast the spell, you can just take off and there's another 64 runes. So everybody should have 100, 128 runes in their possession. And that's important. Throughout the first hour or so of this walkthrough, if you ever see a glowing skull on the ground and I walk right by it, that's on purpose because those are completely random. And um, I don't want to be picking them up and making everybody think that um, I'm relying on those. I'm not, okay? That wouldn't be fair to other people who are following the walkthrough and um, they don't find those. Okay, so rest at the set of grace. We'll talk to Melina and she'll give you, but you Torrent. Turning to, aid you. You need to the foot of the Erd tree. Then it settled, summon Agreed to take Melina with you and she'll give you the matter. spectral steed whistle. I bequeath to you this ring. Shazam! The spectral steed whistle. Use that. To traverse great distances. Well, thank you very much. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has treated him with respect. Okay, I just left that bit of dialogue in there for the sake of those who um, are new to the game. I would switch your flask over to one HP, three FP. That's one red, three blue. Okay, we're playing as a mage, so we don't need all that much HP. Back to the Church of Ella. And I would favorite those three sites of grace there, Church of Ella, First Step, and Gatefront. And we're going back to the Church of Ella to meet up with this Rena. Tarnished. May I? A pleasure to meet and the wood. I'd heard tell of it. And, upon and she's going to give you the wolves. To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. And ah, I was the Torrent. Spirit Calling Bell. There's the Spirit Calling Bell. There's the Lone Wolf Ashes. Glass for a Dialogue. Forgive my I doubt wish. How long will before the tar Done and done. Alright, we're gonna sell everything off at the side of grace. First I wanna set up my horse and the lone wolf ashes. Set those up conveniently so that you can ask to access them quickly. Okay, there's my horse, it's just testing to make sure my hockeys are correct. And let's go talk to the merchant. We're gonna sell off the golden rune too, the last between rune, and all our prisoner armor. What? Yes, all the prisoner armor. Okay, don't need it. Okay, so sell out those runes. Not that, not that, not that. Keep the shield. Sell out the prisoner iron mask, the prisoner clothing, and the prisoner trousers. Alright. Buy a crafting kit and... No, sorry. Buy the torch. Don't buy the crafting kit yet. Just buy a torch. My strategy has changed for this. And that's it. Now we're going to go... 
I just want to put the torch in my left hand along with the shield, and then we're going to go back to Grove Side Cave. In Grove Side Cave, we're going to level up intelligence to 18. We have enough money to do that now. Prisoner starts out with intelligence at 14. We can take it all the way up to 18. That's important. Okay, having done that, you're going to bring up the torch in your left hand, and we're going to go into the cave. Stick to the left side. Strike that. Stick to the right side. Stick to the right side, all the way down. Stick to the right side. And make sure you got your staff ready to go, magic limp blade, and your wolves are ready to pop out. Go all the way down here. Hit up the fog door, go through. First thing you're going to do is cast your wolves. Ding -a ding -a ding. Switch to your shield. Shield up, Scotty. Don't lock on. As soon as the wolves engage, get far away. Turn around, refill FP, lock on. Charge the first magic limp blade and then just spam out a whole bunch more. And you'll have to wait till your stamina recharges. When you're, when you're waiting for your stamina to recharge, refill your FP again. If he comes at you, roll to the side. That's all you have to do, roll to the side. And this should be an easy kill. This is easy 1000 or 1100 runes, I forget. 1000 runes. That's it. So we're going to go back to the church. We get some, some money now again. I think I was having a drink of coffee there. <laughs> okay. And we're going to buy crafting kit and one cracked pot. And the telescope. Goodbye. Okay, and you hook up the telescope in the convenient spot. You don't really have to buy the telescope, but I would recommend it. It's really useful. I'm buying it primarily for the walker. So I can point out things easily until we get the bow. Okay, and then wait till daytime. Because bad things come out at night. Always wait till daytime whenever possible. And we're going to go up and work our way to gate front. We're going to kill three Godric soldiers on the way. First one, we're going to demonstrate the power of guard counter. Put your shield up, wait for him to hit you, strong attack, knocks him out, stab him to death. Okay, once again, shield up, wait for him to hit you. Press the strong, strong attack button right, out, right away after, and you'll knock him out and then just press the attack button to finish him off. Next is the guy sitting by the campfire. Just follow the path going up here. Go into sneak mode, lock on, press the attack button when you get close. Make sure you come to a full stop before you press the attack button, otherwise you won't get a sneak attack. And grab those four Kukri. And same thing with this guy. Get it behind him, sneak attack. And I'm getting some good loot here, it looks like. All right, at this point, you're looking off to the north, and you see this archway right here. Gamer Slack's going to point that out. You're going to go right underneath that archway, gallop under there. As soon as you get past the Godric soldier, you're going to hop off your horse. See the Godric soldier right there? Hop off your horse right about now, and you get neatly right into the cellar. Go down to the cellar and grab the goodies in the treasure chest. Namely, that would be the Whetstone Knife and the Storm Stomp Ash of War. Whetstone storm stop, whetstone knife. Turn around, you're gonna hop on your horse, gallop to the top and cut to the right. Gallop to the top, cut to the right, hop over those guys, circle around, past the guy holding the spear, there's the guy holding the spear, and follow this path straight down to the north, and just bump yourself right into the pillar. Let the pillar stop you, this is an easy way to pick up the map, and then cut to the left, and we're gonna go back to the side of grace. And rest to, um, get all the enemies to calm down. Rest. Down and down. Now we're going to go grab the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. This is important. So get into sneak mode. Sneak up right behind this guy. Lock on. Attack. Backstab. Instant kill. And open up this carriage and grab the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Next, we're going to cut back to the side of grace, but you don't have to rest. Turn around here. Equip your staff. Stop about here. Lock onto this guy sitting in front of the campfire. And cast out a magic limp blade. This is just get rid of him so that you can grab the smoldering butterfly there without being harassed. Okay, there's a smoldering butterfly. Grab those. 
And here I want to get these guys' attention because I want to get the, the Godric Knight away from the other smoldering butterflies. So here I just shot another magic limb plate. That'll get the Godric Knight's attention. And as soon as he gets close enough, just run over here and grab the second smoldering butterfly. Okay, this is for the benefit of those who are not so quick with their fingers. Okay. Normally I would just run straight through and grab those two smoldering butterfly, but you know, I'm just showing you an easy way to grab those. If you're not like so quick with everything, that's an easy way to grab those without too much hassle. Alright. Rest here to get rid of the enemies, and you're gonna look off to the northeast, look at that giant sword stabbed into the ground. That thing right there. You're gonna head towards that. Pass by it. As soon as you get over this rock here, you're going to see some hedgehogs in the distance. An enemy camp, those spiky things, and an entrance with two fires beside it. Go on the right side up this ramp. Double jump with your horse. Stop right about here. Grab the cookbook. And some more smoldering butterfly. You don't have to panic run through this. There's lots of time, as you can see. Okay? There's no reason to panic. Take your time. Grab it and run. And cut off to the left when you get out. And you're going to go for this golden rune too, right here beside this cement blocks. And then look for the birds, the three birds here. You're gonna jump off your horse just as you pass the birds and land by the side of Grace. Next, we're gonna to go towards these. We're gonna drop off down into the ravine. And you see a spirit spring right there. You're gonna take a little bit of damage. Don't worry about it. A little bit of damage as you get down to the bottom. Grab one mushroom, two mushroom, hop off your horse, grab the poison bloom, Point yourself towards the spirit spring and press jump when you get on the spirit spring to jump way up. And kind of veer off to the left here. And now we're going to grab three Trina's Lily in the middle of the field. Gamer Slack is going to point them out. There they are. That's where you're going to grab. Okay, so it's going to run and quickly spam the action button when you get near them. You should be able to grab them all and then just take off before the bears attack you. Head to the east. Look around to the south. Grab some bear poop on the way, grab another piece of bear poop, and grab this smithing stone, and interact with the painting. This is worth 500 runes, okay? I'm going to show you why later on. Discover the site of grace. Probably want to rest to refill everything. Then you're going to point yourself to the west. See that those rocks there, that kind of rocky plateau? You're going to pass by on the left side of that rocky plateau, that right there. And you're going to double back right here. Double back along the cliff's edge. You're looking for this teardrop scarab right here. Okay. Spam it with magical in place. Should be able to take care of it, no problem. Okay, and that's a free somber smithing stone one. By the way, the, the operative word throughout this run is overkill okay don't listen to anybody in the comments section saying you don't need to do this you don't need to do that ignore them okay overkill 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 it's better to you know it's better to be overkill better to do overkill than to be overly killed <laughs> if you will no seriously so the anyone you know, see anybody saying hey slack you're wasting this you're wasting that no no. All my runs through Elden Ring, I've always ended up with way more resources than I needed. Okay, so you aim yourself, aim yourself towards the big yellow earth tree in the distance. Hop off the cliff, turn to the east. Hop off the cliff. Turn to the left a bit, looking for this graveyard. In the middle of the graveyard is another cookbook, which will allow you to make sleep pots. So right on top of this tomb right here. Grab that purple thing, and that is Fever's Cookbook 1. That'll allow you to make sleep pots. Grab seven golden runes here. Count them so you make sure you got them all. That's two. That's three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Grab this mushroom up here by the tree, and then we're going to go to what I call Rune Bear Canyon. There's a lesser rune bear down there. He will just absolutely myrtleize you. But um, you can take this tombstone step here, drop off the right side to the next tombstone step, drop off here, 
and find the tombstone step on your left here get out to the end of it and you'll see the room bear down there lock on and spam out glint blades refill that piece spam out glint blades refill that piece spam out glint blades until he's dead the prisoner is the only character class that can take down this room bear at the beginning of the game unless you're an absolute expert at dodging and if you're an expert at dodge, if you can dodge your way around this room bear I don't know why you're watching this walker, I I'm honored that you're watching this walker <laughs> those things are just um, I mean they'll wipe their ass with you there you go, easy 1196 runes, hop on your horse gallop forward, do a jump at the end, you get yourself on top of this tombstone step and now we're gonna go down there see the magic sparkly thing there, grab that, that's the smithing stone too, grab that down to the end, grab a couple of Trina's Lily and get the fuck out of Dodge, pardon my French. You could grab this thing here, this Beast Blood, which always drops from the Lesser Room Bear, but you don't have to, it's no big deal. You can just skip that. Get a Mushroom here, you're going to double back on the cliffs to get another Mushroom. And we're going to go up and get the Sacred Blade Ash of War. So just head up towards the northeast, keep the, keep the cliffs on your left side. Head towards the spear spring, but don't take the spirit spring. Up to stop after your horse right here. Double back. Lock on to this gray teardrop scarab here. And spam out those magic limb blades. Just spam out the whole whack. Like I said, overkill. There we go. We got the Ash of War Sticker Blade. That's very important. Now we're going down to the Third Church of America. Look around, go through the swamp, head to the southeast and jump through the hole in the wall. Hook around to the left to grab the secret tier. And grab the Crimson Crystal tier and the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Hop off your horse and interact with this side of grace. Rest and we're gonna hook up the, the Flask of Wondrous Physic with, uh, first of all, we're gonna spend the secret tier. Increase amount replenished by flask, yes please and fill up the flask of wondrous physical with that crimson crystal tear which will give you like an emergency health refill so now you have like you know another way to recover health and put the sacred blade on your s talk sacred affinity once again that's a sacred blade on your s talk sacred affinity and i'm just going to put that flask of wondrous physical in a convenient place and we're good to go now we're going to go back to gate front Probably want to wait till daytime. And the dangers of gate front is this troll here. Gamerslack is going to point him out. It's a troll there. He's going to drop down as soon as you start galloping through. So gallop straight up the road as fast as you can. And as soon as you pick up this thing here, double jump. Because when the troll lands, it'll create like a uh, kind of a shock and it may stagger you. Grab the smoldering butterfly and the mushroom. And this guy is going to blow his horn. I always stab him. This is kind of a little, little tradition. You don't have to do that. I just love stabbing that guy when he's just trying to blow his horn and warn everybody. These little pleasures in life. <laughs> Grab this golden seed. Turn out to the east. Go out to the field. Look for the chairs. And grabs three smithing stones. One right there. And double back to the northwest. And we're going to get up on that rocky plateau. Double jump here, and off your horse to get to the side of Grace. Here in this area is Rodrika and a stone sword key right above, um, I don't know what we're going to name this character. There's Rodrika. You don't have to talk to her. You don't have to talk to her. I'm going to show you another way to get the jellyfish ashes for free. Grab this stone sword key though, and now we're going to head to the north, and Gamer Slack's going to show you exactly where to go. See this arch right here? You're going to go past underneath this arch. It's kind of a hidden path up to Lyurnia. And you may want to double jump your horse a little bit to avoid the guy with the crossbow shooting you. He may or may not shoot you. And grab any ingredients you see 
especially mushrooms. Entirely optional, but um, yeah, grab them because it's easy to do while you're on the horse. And gallop all the way up the road. At the end, there's going to be a cookbook that will allow you to make soft cotton. That's important, so grab it. Grab it. And jump down here. And before we take the secret path to Lyurnia, right we're going to go down into this little field here and get the Stormwall um, Ash of War, which is worth 300 runes. We're not going to use it. We're just going to you know, grab it and sell it. Jump off your horse, and you know the routine now with these teardrop scarabs. Get behind them, lock on, spam out those coin plates. Okay, and follow my path here. If you um, hold down the action button and tap the guard button, you'll equip your torch. Like the way my girl has done here. So like switch to the torch in your left hand, switch over from the shield, hold down the action button and tap the guard button. And you'll be able to carry the torch while you're on your horse. And you're just going to follow this path all the way up. You're going to pass two packs of wolves. Just ignore them. There's the second pack of wolves. And grabbing what ingredients we can, but it's no big deal. I think there's a mushroom off to the... Uh... Yeah, I missed that. That's okay. Here, I'm looking for it now. Huh. Alright. Hit up the side of grace. I believe it's called Lake Facing Cliffs. Don't, um, actually we are going to rest here. Yeah. And because we left Limgrave, Melon is going to talk to us and offer to take us to the round table hold. It seems torrent, whereas I may. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. And what is that? I can take you to the round table hold. Okay. Gathering place of tarnished champions. Guided by grace. And of course, agreed Very to the well. go to the round table hold. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. Okay, mostly I'm gonna skip most of the dialogue. Some of the dialogue, occasionally, I may let it play for the sake of those who are new to the game. But um, all the cutscenes I'm skipping and all the dialogue I'm skipping. So here we are, the round table hold. We got some business to take care of here. All right, add charge to flask. And we're going to keep just one emergency health flask and put all the rest rest into FP. And that's it. And Rodrika has now transported to the round table. There she is, we'll talk to her in a minute. First thing we're gonna do is go downstairs and get the crossbow. Using the stone sword key that we got at Storm Hill Shack. This is very important for the acquisition of the Meteoric Ore Blade. Get this crossbow. This is a new strategy I developed. Even though we're not going to use this crossbow, really. But it will be useful in a weird way. And there's a little stutter step that's on the PC version that always happens when you pass by there. Okay, and let's go upstairs and talk to the blacksmith and sell off everything. Sell off all the golden runes. And sell off these two um, Ashes of War that we don't need. Don't need Storm Stomp and don't need Stormwall. That's an easy 600 runes. And I think that is about it. Next talk, say, about Rodrika to the blacksmith. Exhaust that dialogue and leave. Now we're going to talk to Rodrika. And exhaust her dialogue and tell her what the blacksmith said Did and it's what he wants or whatever, something like that. I'm a recent arrival. Isn't this place around her? I never knew the guide, although I'm still looking. Okay, tell her what the blacksmith said. I don't believe you. If I do, exhaust the dialogue. I should try and ask Master. Certainly, he does. If I know, I can tell. He's a gentle. All right, now we're going to talk to the blacksmith one more time. Matter. About Rodrika. Are you out of your stay with absurd 
ask him to watch over her. It's what she wants. And that's it. Leave. That's all you have to do. Blacksmith, Rodrika, Blacksmith. That's all you have to do. And you see Rodrika's there. All you have to do now is rest at the round table. She's going to disappear and set up shop in front of the Blacksmith as a spirit tuner. And while we're here, um, we're going to increase strength to 15. Okay, let's get strength to 15. We've got the money to do so. And as you can see, Rodrika has teleported to her new place of business across from the blacksmith. Now, it's talk to Rodrika and access can the please dialogue certain. option. Please. I'd like to can and she gives you the jellyfish ashes. Without having to go through that long triple dialogue option at the Stormhill Shack. Who loves you? Slack loves us. That's right. And don't you forget it. All right, so that's an easy way to get the jellyfish ashes. And we're going to be using those, actually. Okay, and I want to upgrade the Lord's Horn's Greatsword to plus one. This is important. Plus one on the Lord's Horn's Greatsword. That's all. Don't have to upgrade it anymore. And back to the lake face. <laughs> lake, blah, blah. lake facing cliffs, side of grace. There, we're going to put the sacred blade on the Lord's Horn's Greatsword. Now, the Lord's Horn's Greatsword requires strength. 16 to handle properly, so we're gonna have to two hand it. Okay, sacred blade, sacred affinity. To two hand it, hold down the action button and press the attack button. Okay, I'm just gonna wait till daytime. Make sure you two hand it, otherwise, you won't be, you won't be uh, handling it properly. Okay, hold down the action button, press the attack button. Oh, I did it wrong. There we go. So now I'm two handing the sword, and we can cast sacred blade by pressing the, um, the skill button. Okay, now we're going for the Academy Scrolls right there. It's guarded by three skeletons. They can be quite deadly if you let them get out of hand, but we're not going to. Gallop down here. Get off your horse right about here. Go up the path a little bit. See, it's spawning in the ground. And one Sacred Blade to instantly take care of it. Do not go down that path there. Instead, go off the left here through all the, the tombstones and everything. And go up this way. Make sure you approach from this side and approach carefully and you see another skeleton spawn there. Spam your lock on button, sacred blade, and spam your lock on button to lock onto that guy's sacred blade, instant kill. And now you can grab the academy scroll in peace. There we go. That's important. And there's also um, an arteria leaf here. Grab that. And that's it. That's how to take care of this. If you go the other way, for some reason, the lock-on screws up, and it, it's just getting all kinds of... It's a total clusterfuck if you go the other way. So make sure you do it, like I said. And that's it. Go to the Church of Erith. Grab the Sacred Tear. We're going to talk to Thops. Donate 10 runes. There we go. Donate 10 runes. And we're going to buy the Glintstone Pebble. And back to Stormhill Shack. And Rodrika left a little present for us in the form of a golden seed. Now we're going to go back to the first step side of grace. Add an extra charge to your flask. Once again, adjust your flask so you only have one red and all the rest in blue. You want lots of FP. And increase the amount replenished by flask. Use that sacred tier. And now we're going to switch the sacred blade over to the S talk. Switch it off the Lord's Horn's Greatsword and put it, put it on the, the prisoner's default sword, the S talk. Sacred affinity. Alright. So this will increase the damage on the S talk. And. Probably want to day wait till daytime. Oh yeah, and we have a new spell, Glintstone Pebble. So hook up the Glintstone Pebble and the Magic Glint Blade. Equip your S stock, and you can practice holding up your shield and stabbing. See, hold up the shield. That's important. Okay, and we're gonna head off to the east. Switch over to your staff. Make sure you got Glintstone Pebble ready to go. Head out to the east and look for the two birds on the cliff. There they are. 
This is entirely optional, but yeah, kill him, what the hell. You might get some um, flight pinions, and I was lucky I did. Not um, absolutely unnecessary. Kill these bats here, especially the ones close to the cliff. The two bats close to the cliff, make sure you kill them, because they can be a pain in the arse. All you have to do is hit them with one glintstone pebble, and it's an instant kill. The other two you don't have to really worry about. If you can kill them, give it a shot, but just do the two close to the cliff. And then you're going to gallop off to the southwest, keep the cliff on your right side. Keep galloping until you hear the sound of water, and then you circle around like this. Look for the wagon behind the trees. There's the wagon. Crash through the wagon. And get the smithing stone one right here. I think there's a mushroom there too. Grab that. And now we're going to go to Dragonburnt Runes. Just directly to... Uh, no, first of all, we're going to go to... Um, remember the painting that we saw at Artist Shack? That triggers this ghostly guy sitting in the chair right here. So you come near him, he appears, he disappears, and he drops the Incantation Scarab. Which we, we're not going to use, but it's worth 500 runes. So that's, that's an easy 500 runes. Now you're going to go for the tallest structure here in Dragonburnt Runes. That there. You're going to aim for that right there. As soon as you get near it, hop off your horse, go into sneak mode. Go into sneak mode. Get that sword ready to go. You're going to circle around into this little enclosure here. Lock onto a rat. Get your shield up and stab the rat right through your shield. He can't touch you because you got, you got your shield up. Alright. Grab the stone sword key. Yeah, it's like an MC Hammer thing. Can't touch this. Sneak around here, drop into the cellar. Go all the way down to the bottom. And kill three rats. Kill that rat there. It'll take two pebbles. It's just short of killing him with one pebble, so make sure you pop out another pebble right away. Go off to the left. Kill that rat in the corner. And the third rat over here. They're only worth 13 runes each. You can kill the last two. Gamerslack's going to point them out, one there and one there, but you know, don't bother. They're only worth 13 runes each. You just want to clear the path to the door and then get your treasure. Oh, no, wait a minute. It's a trap. But we want this. You're ensnared to transport a trap. You're going to get transported to Celia Crystal Tunnel. As soon as you arrive, there's going to be a treasure chest off to your left, which does indeed in, um, contain some treasure. You're going to grab that. Grab all the stuff in here. We're going to sell that off. That's worth 900 runes. And wait for this miner to pass by this little rock here. See right above my girl's head there. There we go. And now you're going to sneak up here. Sneak around to the right. Find the sacks. Drop off next to the sacks so that you don't get kicked out of sneak mode. And then keep the cliff, or the wall rather, on your left side as you sneak all the way down. Hug the wall on your left side and you'll, sneak, you'll be able to sneak out no problem. There's some very dangerous enemies in this area, so don't take this lightly. Sneak out, okay? And down here, and grab the rot grease. And you're going to have to rest at the side of grace before you can fast travel anywhere, because you were trapped in a transported trap. And I believe this might be the end of the run. I forget where I ended off the run. Are we going to go all the way for the run? Yeah, we're going to all get... Yeah, that's right. We're going to go all the way for rock sling. So we rested here. Wait till daytime. And now we are in Kalid. Hop on your horse and gallop along the right side. Keep the cliff on your right side there. Gallop all the way down to the south. Keep going, keep going until you eventually see this big, giant, red teardrop scarab. There's the giant red teardrop scarab. Hang a right and go up the canyon. And you're going to go all the way up the canyon. Gallop quickly past these... Um, I call them blow-up worms. I forget what they're called officially. But as you pass them, they're going to blow up. So just keep galloping. Go straight towards that big ball. And right on the right side of the big ball, you're going to grab a somber smithing stone. Five. Hop over here to the back and just just wait here for a moment. for that. Wait for that guy to calm down and then you can gallop back. 
And all those worms that blew up on the way, they drop um, rune fragments. You can grab them if you want. You can make some rainbow stones with, with those. I usually like to grab them. But that's not necessary. Okay, having gotten out of the canyon, you're going to turn to the right. And you're going to look for what I call Hump Branch. It's to the west here. This is the Hump Branch. You're going to get on top of the Hump Branch. Turn to the left. And look to the southwest. And find the gap in the wall. See the gap in the wall? You're going to hop off your horse just before the gap. And this will put you right neatly on top of the stairs that leads down to the cellar. Okay, so hop off your hopper horse just before you hit the gap in the wall. And run down here and grab the rock sling spell. Da 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 da. Now go up here immediately. Don't think about it, just go up, lock onto this guy, spam out four, four glintstone pebbles to kill him. And hop on your horse immediately. Jump, double jump when you get to the top of the stairs to avoid these guys because they might, you know, get a little cheeky. Go up these big set of stairs here, jam yourself into the corner, and grab the traveler's armor set and the perfume bottle. Jump over here like this, find the other stairs off to the right, go all the way to the top of the stairs, jump off your horse, turn around and kill the two flowers with glintstone pebbles. Should take three or four glintstone pebbles each. This is just so they don't start sneaking up the stairs and shooting poison at you while you're taking care of business um, in here. Okay, and kill three flowers in here. Should take three glintstone pebbles each. That's one flower down. That's two. And should be a third one there. Okay, and in here grab the golden rune. I think it's a five or a six. I think it's a six. Nope, it's a four. And most importantly, the meteorite staff. Okay, so now you got the meteorite staff and the rock sling spell, both of which require, drum roll please, intelligence 18. That's why I had to get intelligence 18 way back in the beginning of this run. All right, so with those equipped, let's get the fuck out of Dodge. Pardon my French. And you're going to go through the rot here and circle around to the right and find the site of grace. And this is where this run ends. And I want to thank you very much for watching. My name is Major Slack, and I definitely approve this video. If you do too, please give the old Slacks a big old thumbs up, post a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. All right, I'll see you on Sunday for part two, okay? Part two is going to be uploaded on Sunday. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1. That's all. That's all it takes. Alright? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.